Hey, our videos are up one day earlier on Libri.tv. Please check them out there if you can. We actually earn money if you watch them on Libri. We haven't been able to do that on YouTube for years. That being said, about 10 years ago, Crytek and Electronic Arts released a quite, I would say, terrible trailer for Crisis 2's multiplayer mode. It was called Crisis 2 Hero's Journey Multiplayer Footage. That's because, at the time, everything was hero or heroic your abilities were your actions were everything was heroic especially for electronic arts and people trying to sell you overpriced keyboards and mice it was a dark time where everybody was stroking the ego of the overgrown babies that usually make up competitive gaming communities you know who you are you know you've ruined everything for everybody forever but while working on a different show which is probably gonna come up in uh one day, soon, it got me thinking, what if they meant something else? So I went back and watched the trailer again. No, they didn't mean something else, it is just a marketing term that they used. But there is such a thing as the hero's journey. It is that thing that Joseph Campbell defined in his book The Hero with a Thousand Faces about how people are really, truly, creatively bankrupt at a genetic level. Our brains come up with the same stories, constantly. It's the same thing with symmetry, we like symmetry, we love symmetry, because it's built into our heads. And so are stories that follow the exact or approximate formula of the hero's journey. The idea that you start out as a nobody, you start from zero, then you set off from the world that you knew into the unknown. There you will meet somebody who will teach you how the unknown works, you will meet friends, you will meet enemies, you will go on adventures and delve into the depths of the unknown, you will eventually fail and unmake yourself, you will destroy yourself, you will metaphorically and physically sometimes die and then be reborn, you will be transformed, you will embrace the unknown, master it, you will redeem your losses and you will go back to the world that you left, now changed, transformed, perhaps for the better for you, but for those around you, you have become a stranger. Pretty much every popular story uses this type of framework, because it's one we like, we really like it, and it's annoying, because you try to break it, and people say, well, that's not as fun as the other one. It's the same thing with the three-act structure for movies, unless you have that one that has specific beats, that at this point you're supposed to be at your lowest point, that at this point you're supposed to have a switcheroo, a reversal of fates, and then people aren't gonna say, well, that movie was boring, not as good as that other one, it's like the same one I've seen 50 times. And this applies to games as well, and I'm not talking about single-player games, Games. Single player games that have stories are built with similar structures in mind. They have no choice. That's how you get a progression, especially if it's an RPG or a Zelda thing. You go through these steps. But this thing functions in multiplayer as well. It actually functions best in the most story deprived, short form multiplayer games possible. This structure is present in every ranked game you know, in every game with a leaderboard, in every game with any sort of competitive multiplayer. It is why we even derive pleasure from the multiplayer in the first place. Yeah, the gameplay itself can be fun, but are you really playing Dota or League of Legends or Counter-Strike and have been playing them for 15 years because you like the gameplay? Or that you like the meta-narrative that it builds, that the structure of the game feeds into your brain, giving you all sorts of funny fuzzy feelings, and dopamines and serotonins and the other thing that usually is associated with something that follows the structure of the hero's journey. You are there for the rush, the thrill, the satisfaction, 
the emotion that the multiplayerization instills within you. And it begins, as always, with the call to adventure. You click, join game, or find opponents, or get me a bunch of Russians that have been playing this for 20 years and I just started and I'm gonna have the worst time imaginable. There may be a moment where you decide, you know what, maybe this, is, this isn't a, a good idea. I mean, I could run into people that will ruffle stomp me, and you may think I should cancel. And there is the refusal of the call, which is often an important bit of the hero's journey. That apprehension that maybe the known world is where I belong. Not there in the unknown where wolves may live. But it's too late. You've found opponents. Your match begins. You're now in teamfight tactics at the roundabout, trying to figure out which one of these characters you're gonna pick. But you've never played this before, have you? And you just look at what everybody else is picking. You look at their actions as how they're playing. They become your mentors. Even if you're in a game that has no cooperative mode, no team-based action, you can still learn from your opponents. They will act as a mentor for you. And as your enemies as well. Maybe even as your allies, as you will collaborate on taking down the more powerful player. That's basically what most battle royale games become doing your best to not get killed while you make sure other people more skilled than you do their best to try and kill the people that are even better and you'll struggle you will try you will fail sometimes you will lose weapon caches you'll miss shots you'll be in the wrong place when the circle closes and there will come a time when you are in the deep of it at your lowest point, you may have one hit point left. It may be you versus five terrorists, and they're about to plant the bomb. It's almost over. What are you gonna do? Your team saying clutch or kick? Or if it's one of those games where you can respawn, maybe uh, you're in the gulag now, trying to fight your way out of the afterlife. And you succeed. You, you find one of your allies' AVPs, or the doc on your team finally remembers, oh yeah, I can heal people, and heals you. And you find the determination to keep going, to move forward, to defeat your enemies who will never see you coming. They discounted you. They thought you weren't going to be any sort of threat. And now, four of them are dead. It's just you and perhaps the big boss of the enemy team, who's probably just a guy like you. Now, on the other shoe, tables have turned type of situation. And in an epic battle, under the cheering or swear words of your teammates or everybody else around you if it's not a team sport you succeed you are victorious the round is yours maybe even the entire match is now yours you win you have a tone for not doing anything at the beginning of the match the game congratulates you that you have succeeded that your journey is over that you can now return home outside of the game world knowing that although nobody in the physical world in the known world will have any sort of idea of what you've done, you know in your heart of hearts that you are changed, that you are something greater now, something better. And just living as you used to doesn't seem like it can be enough anymore. So you repeat the process about 50 times a day until that feedback loop of constant rewards destroys you mentally. That is, if you win. If not, then an incomplete hero's journey can be a fundamentally frustrating thing, like an incredibly disappointing, heart-wrenching, annoying, absolutely soul-crushing, depression-inducing experience. But man, when you win, you just feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And then hopefully don't get the uh, urge to start posting everywhere on social media and forums that you are the leads, everybody else is the noobs, they should aspirate your ding dong. By the way, Yaya yeah, yeah, Ding Dong, excellent song. Go watch Eurovision on uh, Netflix. There should probably be a test somewhere, an experiment that somebody can conduct to see if uh, this repeated loop has any sort of negative influences on our monkey brains on long-term behavior because I've seen it have negative effects on short-term behavior when I was playing football. Not the FIFA kind, but actual football. It's the aggression that builds up when you're, when you're not the hero in the journey, when you're the enemy that is crushed by the hero, when you can't transform yourself reactualize and atone for your mistakes. Also, there is the absolutely known fact that ranked multiplayer will turn most people into assholes. That is 
I believe, uh, scientifically documented through the existence of the League of Legends, Dota, Counter-Strike, StarCraft, Street Fighter, and every other competitive multiplayer game communities. I used to cover esports about 13 years ago, stopped covering esports about 13 years ago because everybody there is just um, a complete narcissistic tool, I believe is the uh, exact term. And I'm not sure if the game specifically nourished that or if narcissistic tools were drawn to them. Because I've noticed that kind of reaction in myself as well when I used to play League of Legends and felt slowly turning myself into a worse human being. Of course, there's the old adage that humans are fundamentally terrible horrible and it takes a lot of restraint and training and education and understanding and effort to become civilized, to become not a raging narcissistic tool. But then we got social media and that really sort of eclipsed any sort of damage that video games and multiplayer video games ranked multiplayer, competitive ranked multiplayer, conquest, you know the crowd, that those kind of games can do. Nevertheless, the hero's journey is built into the multiplayer component. From humble beginnings, through trials and tribulations, to death and rebirth, to transformation, atonement, and then finally, to GG well played. Goodbye everybody. Oh yeah, uh, Raul uh, cut off my hand because the last time I didn't say like and subscribe, so uh, I'm gonna tell you to do it now, otherwise he's going for my kidneys next. Take care.